Hey guys, Fox here. Uh, it's that time of the year. It's time to announce my uh, games of the year for 2018. Uh, pen around looking at my uh, <laughs> other guilty pleasure, which are these uh, Speed Champions Legos cars. I love those things. I love building those. Anyway, back to the subject at hand. 2018 top games. Um, so, I think I have 10 here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, exactly 10. Wow. Alright. So, this year was a good year. There, I played a lot of solid, good games. I mean, some really good games. Uh, but for me, I don't think it was as good as last year. Last year, I had a phenomenal year playing games, putting hundreds of hours into multiple games. It was fantastic. Uh, especially for the JRPGs, Persona 5 and Xenoblade 2, which are some of my favorite RPGs to date, which is, that says a lot. Both of those coming out in one year. Uh, but uh, this year is no slouch. Um, I got some, some killer soundtracks from certain titles, and uh, I'll, I'll tell you which ones I thought were amazing as we go through my list. Um, now, I don't want to take too much time here. Uh, my memory is pretty piss poor, so if I must speak about some of these games, uh, uh, don't, don't, don't be too mad about it. <laughs> uh, but uh, uh, these games were amazing, and I think they all are deserving of the list. Uh, so, let's start off with my number 10. And that's going to be Battle Chasers Night War. Now, I know this came out late last year, uh, but I didn't play it till the beginning of this year. Um, this was something I was really excited about because I love the art style. It is really, really well drawn. And uh, I guess that's to be expected as this, this game did originally start as a comic book. So, uh, the combat was fun, although sometimes a little repetitive. Uh, but uh, I couldn't get over the art. The music was pretty good, and the overworld map was interesting. And I know you could go re-enter dungeons to get different loot, and all that stuff. But uh, it was a lot of fun. Um, I don't think I really 100% finished this game, um, but I'm pretty sure I got damn near to the end and got distracted by another game on this list. Uh, but I had a lot of fun with this. I may revisit this sometime. Uh, there's a good chance of that. Because I really like this. This this was visually very pleasing to me. Number 10, Battle Chasers Night War. Number 9 is a relatively recent l release. And I'll go ahead and give off the hint to this game. It's one of the only two disc games released and by discs so that means PS4 for me um, and uh, yeah that's Red Dead Redemption 2 um, I liked the first game didn't think it was as awesome as everybody else thought but I did enjoy it uh, this game is a visual sp spectacle okay, let's call it that very pretty on the eyes, especially on the PS4 Pro. Now I hear it even looks better on an Xbox One X if you do own one of those. Uh, the voice acting is phenomenal, uh, which is kind of to be to be expected from Rockstar. They usually will put the money into a solid voice cast, and of course the visuals as well. Uh, some problems with the game is that I found the story to be rather bland. Uh, it was kind of slow. It, it, it didn't really hook me. Um, I honestly kind of got bored of this after a while. But I still want to go back and play it. I want to see how the story ends. I, I played about 30 hours of this. I want to go back to it though. Um, it, what brings me back is that I felt like I was playing a movie, a western. 
and I thought that was really cool, but the story was kind of lacking for me. I don't know. Does anybody else feel the same? I know this is probably winning some Game of the Year awards, and you know, it probably deserves it, but not in my book. It falls at number nine. Number eight is a little quiet release, but uh, one of the more fun couch multiplayer games. And that's Overcooked 2. Uh, for those of you who played the original Overcooked, this is more of the same, just a lot more shenanigans going on, uh, more characters added, different recipes that you gotta cook, and a different overall story to play. It, <laughs> it's a lot of fun. Uh, the couch co-op makes it very entertaining. You need very good cooperation to make it far in this game. If you guys are just horsing around, you can sabotage each other there and you won't get far. Uh, but uh, it's, it's, it's awesome. And the nice thing that this one added was online multiplayer. Although I haven't played it as much because I think this is, this is more unique to the couch co-op. Uh, that way you can yell at your buddies while you're playing, make plans when you royally fuck up in one kitchen. You're like, alright, this is what we're going to do. You're going to go over here, you're going to wash dishes, you're going to chop vegetables, and this guy's over here is going to cook the meat, and the other guy's going to serve it and take the dishes to the sink. <laughs> Stuff like that. It, it's a lot of fun. Uh, when my buddies come over, we always return to play this. So, at number 8, Overcooked 2. Number 7. Highly anticipated game for me, and uh, I still really enjoyed it. Uh, it had some faults, but it it was fun, and that's Octopath Traveler. I have been looking forward to this game ever since the Switch was announced, and this was one of uh, Square Enix's showcase games that they wanted to show for the Switch. And I think I think it did well. I think it was a su successful departure from the norm. Um, oh, it's just a map on the back because this is a special edition. Uh, but having the eight unique stories was absolutely fun. It was a different idea to have them all come together. Uh, and actually, that's not unique. It's happened many times. I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> the visuals. <laughs> HD sprites. It's pretty interesting. It I thought it was amazing. It looked beautiful. Uh, the music in this game was outstanding. Some of the best music of the year. So this is one of the, the games that I'm going to suggest that you at least listen to the soundtrack to this game. It is gorgeous. Um, some things that were lacking in this game were some of the uh, stories. So eight stories here for eight characters. Uh, some of them were pretty meh. Some of them were actually pretty good. You actually knew which characters you really liked by their stories. One of my favorites was Alfin back here. I liked Theon's story and uh, Cyrus. Primrose was pretty unique too. A little, they all had some dark darkness to their stories, so it was pretty unique. But anyway, number seven, Octopath Traveler. Number six is a relatively recent release, and I think of this game as more of a very good, fun, nostalgia trip. And that's Pokemon Let's Go. Uh, I have the Eevee edition here, and there's also a Pikachu edition. Uh, so this is really a remake of Pokemon Yellow. Um, and it is a ton of fun. Easy to play, fun to go through the original dungeons, working with the original 151 lot of fun I enjoyed this thoroughly and it could be played through rather quickly because of the the uh, changes to the catch mechanics which is just chucking balls at Pokemon that you actually see on the field and uh, it makes things quicker but it can also be frustrating because if you're trying to use a fucking Joy-Con to throw Pokeballs at the Pokemon good luck it sucks uh, if you really want to catch Pokemon, easy way is you pull out your Switch and you play it in handheld mode because you just aim the screen at the Pokemon and push a button to throw the ball. Easy peasy. 
Uh, so yeah, so it's kind of like Pokemon Go in that aspect. But there are a lot of trainers on the field that you get a battle to gain more experience um, and going through all the dungeons and the, the Elite Four. And seeing the original Pokemon area in kind of an HD, I guess you could say, is pretty cool. Uh, this was fun to revisit Kanto. That's what I'm going to say. A lot of fun. Uh, so anyways, this is number seven, six. <laughs> number six is Pokemon Let's Go Eevee. All right, number five. Very recent release. Still playing it. And that's Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Not much to be said. This is deserving of its spot. Uh, because it is honestly the ultimate Super Smash Brothers because it has every character ever released for any Smash Brother in it. Uh, it adds a lot of new features, adds a little kind of story mode that's a lot of fun and addictive to play. Added these, um, uh, what is it called? Those spirits, I believe, that you can add on in that story mode. That's a lot of fun to collect those. And just unlocking all the characters and, of course, just playing Smash with your homies. Uh, the online kind of sucks, uh, it's very laggy, even if you do rock the uh, ethernet adapter, it really doesn't help a lot, it's just the online is pretty buggy right now. I am very sure Nintendo will fix it rather quickly though, so I'm not scared of that. Um, and they also announced uh, Joker. Uh, it's the first DLC character for this game, I'm very excited. I will definitely be rocking Joker. Uh, in case you want to know, my characters I like to play in this one are Little Mac and Lucina. Those are my two favorite to play as. Anyway, number five, Super Smash Ultimate. Number four is a game that actually came out probably two years ago, maybe three years ago on PC, but this year is when it finally came to console. So this is when I finally got to play it. And it's a game I'm slowly playing through with a couple of close buddies of mine because it has a multiplayer for the story mode. Campaign mode, if you will. And that is Divinity Original Sin 2, the Definitive Edition. Uh, this is quite a unique, fun game. Something that I didn't really get to play before. I have the original Divinity Original Sin, but I never got around to playing it. And my buddies are like, let's pick up to number two, number two. I was like, oh, okay, because this supports, you know, the four-player online multiplayer. Let's do it. Wow, this is cool. So it, it kind of works like Diablo, except when you get into battle, it turns into tactical RPG. So it's turn-based with AP points, and, you know, you use those action points to move, to do actions, to attack, all that stuff. So very big on the strategy when it comes to battle it is a ton of fun the world is ginormous i haven't even seen half of the world yet and i'm still playing through this this is a game that me and my buddies will probably be playing for the next year to be honest um i think the the only games that might come out that will kick us off playing this might be maybe another dark souls another bloodborne or something because those are the games we usually play but uh this is really good underrated uh highly suggest anybody give this game a try it's unique battle system to a dungeon crawling style game is pretty awesome all right number four divinity two number three is a game i've been playing lately and uh kind of cheating because this kind of came out late last year on the switch digitally uh but limited run went ahead and released it physically and you know me if I hold out long enough, hopefully Limited Run will release a physical version of it for me. And <laughs> held true. And something I'm really enjoying a lot for its uniqueness. And that's Golf Story on the Switch. Uh, crazy cool. I never thought I would see a game that was a golf game and also an RPG. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. Uh, still playing through this right now, uh, but I'm very confident on where I'm putting it on the list and it should stay there. Uh, yes, it's got some rudimentary graphics, some sprite-based work, but the golf game is solid. It's fun. 
unique courses, unique different types of hazards and things to avoid. Um, as you play courses and do different tasks around and try to develop uh, uh, your home course, you get experience, you can level up different stats which in regards to your golf game, uh, like your accuracy, your power, uh, your spin control, just stuff like that as you level up. It's really cool, it's really unique, I'm enjoying this, the story and it's pretty humorous. Uh, and it's it's golf. I, I like golf games too. So this this really speaks to me. It's a lot of fun. Um, I hope you most of you guys have already tried this. If not, go ahead and give it a shot. Um, I'm pretty sure you can still pick up physical copies at Best Buy. I think bought a shit ton of these from Limited Run because uh, they want to support Limited Run and sell their games in stores. So this is one of the games that they did pick up. Uh, so yeah number three golf story all right number two game released earlier this year and something I went ahead and bought a whole new system for and it's that one right there that PS4 Pro because it came with this God of War um, I'm sure this is winning game of the year all over the place including with uh, different media outlets like uh, IGN polygon stuff like that uh, this game, wow, uh, it was a surprise to me how much fun I had with it. And not, I mean, even the story was pretty damn good. The voice acting was great. I think the thing that I had the most fun with was the combat. Uh, a lot of fun. They did a very good job of making it satisfying doing the combat, especially with the fucking Leviathan Axe. Man, man was that a fun thing to use. I enjoyed it more than the Blades of Chaos. Yeah. <laughs> You heard me. Leviathan Axe all day long. Um, but yeah, this... Wow. It's gorgeous. It's beautiful to look at. The sound work was amazing. And the soundtrack was phenomenal. Uh, seeing how Kratos has changed over the long years since uh, God of War 3, you know, chronologically in this game, is pretty amazing. I like the whole story, I like the move to the Nordic Gods and learning about his son, uh, who, I'm not going to say it's spoilers, but it's pretty interesting. Uh, this game leaves up definitely to another God of War, which are they going to call it God of War 2? I don't know, the naming conventions for this are bad. <laughs> Wasn't there already a God of War game? Well, whatever. But anyway, this is definitely my number two. I hope you, most of you people have played this, I'm sure. Uh, get the soundtrack. This is fun to listen to on its own. Great game. All right, and number one, for those of you who know me, you probably will be able to figure out what has fallen to number one. And I'm actually kind of surprised because I didn't see this one coming in at number one when uh, I anticipated games that were coming out for this year. Uh, but it surprised me. I fell in love with it enough to play through it uh, and put 130 hours into it. Get that platinum trophy. It uh, it made me smile. I liked all the characters in this game, and that's Dragon Quest XI: Echoes of an Elusive Age. This is the alternate cover art. Um, Man, these characters. You felt like you went through a long journey with these guys and you all enjoyed it there. So you got your hero, you got Reb, the old man. I could say much more than just their names. You got Jade, you've got Silvando, Serena, Eric, and Veronica. Oh man, what a great cast. Voice work was amazing. Um, something that really surprised me when I learned about the development of this game for uh, the US was that they added so many voice tracks to the game. Japan didn't have any voice tracks. What? That's amazing that we got voice tracks. It sucks that Japan didn't, but I don't know if they got a patch where they could get it or not. I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, but this game was long. And then after you beat it, you find out that, holy crap, there's a huge post-game that's just in the game for free. 
Wow, Square, you didn't charge me a buttload of money just to let me play another part of the story? Amazing, I'm happy about that. Uh, the combat was great. It's pretty typical for, you know, your turn-based combat. But uh, one thing is, is that even though this may not be the most uh, graphic intensive, it's one of the most gorgeous worlds I've got to adventure. For something that's kind of bright and, you know, more cartoonish, this world looked amazing. I was so happy to just journey and just look at everything. The vistas, the world, the bright colors. It was just very enjoyable to play. I, it's a game I couldn't wait to come home after work, put a couple hours into, just to enjoy the scenery. Um, I have one minor gripe about this game. Even though what was of the soundtrack was amazing, there certainly wasn't enough of it. Uh, there are far too many reused tracks. So too few tracks, let's say that. Um, and it was kind of try trying on you, especially after putting over 100 hours into it. Uh, so I wish there were much more tracks in this game for the soundtrack. Uh, it came to a point where I actually turned off the music and just had the sound effects going. I'm sure that happened to a lot of people. But the story was a lot of fun. The characters were all memorable. I loved the characters. The voice acting was very good. Uh, this was a solid, solid JRPG. And I'm happy to announce that this was my top game of the year. Dragon Quest XI. Alright guys. I hope you enjoyed this top 10 for 2018. Thanks for watching.